This presentation is an analysis of Lord Alfred Tennyson's In Memoriam A.H.H. Overview of In Memoriam Lord Alfred Tennyson's poem In Memoriam A.H.H. is a series of poems written over a period of 17 years as an elegy, or sad poem of lament, over the death of a loved one, in memory of his closest friend, sister's fiancé, and literary critic of his work, Arthur Hallam, who died suddenly at the age of 22, most likely of a stroke. The poem is made up of 131 individual lyric units or cantos that are self-contained poems but work together to show an autobiographical depiction of the three years of mourning Tennyson himself experiences after Hallam's death. The poem is intensely personal in its coverage of Tennyson's grief but covers other more universal themes such as the religious doubts of the age, the meaning of the universe, and humankind's place in it. The poem is like a diary in its portrayal of the progressive development from despair to some sort of hope over the course of three years. The reoccurring Christmases in sections 28, 78, and 104 indicate the stages of his development to the point where the author eventually comes to acceptance of the loss and to, to assert his traditional Christian belief in life and an afterlife. Each poem within In Memoriam is written in quatrains or four-line stanzas written in iambic tetra tetrameter or eight syllables per line alternating between stressed and unstressed syllables with a rhyme scheme of A-B-B-A -B -B -A, which is now called the In Memoriam stanza. Summary of the prologue to In Memoriam the prologue to Tennyson's poem, In Memoriam, was written in 1849, after the rest of the poem was complete, and consists of 11 stanzas. Tennyson did not name this introduction the prologue, but that is how it is commonly referred to now. The prologue sets a somber tone and is a respectful tribute to and prayer to the the strong son of God or Jesus, thus establishing his traditional Christian belief and faith in God as an important basis for the poem. The poem says that since humanity has never seen God's face and has no proof of his existence, he can only reach God through faith. The poem attributes the sun and the moon, which he calls the these orbs or sh light and shade, to God, whom he calls the creator of life and death in both animals and in man and animals. The prologue states that humanity cannot understand why they were created, but must believe that it was not simply to die. It goes on to say that the Son of God seems both human and divine, and that each human has control of his or her own will, but this is only so that he might exert himself to God's will. All of humanity's systems of religion and philosophy seem solid but are merely temporary in comparison to the eternal God and though humans can have knowledge of these systems they cannot have knowledge of God. The author expresses the hope that knowledge will grow from more to more but this should also be accompanied by a reverence for that which we cannot know. The prologue ends, uh, ends by asking that God help foolish people to see his light. He repeatedly asks for God to forgive his grief for thy God's creature whom I found so fair. The author has faith that this departed fair friend lives on in God and asks God to make his friend wise. Summary and Analysis of Canto 27 this canto contains the two most famous lines in In Memoriam. Tis better to have loved and lost than never to have loved at all. This canto centers around the essence of this quote by giving examples of situations of how he does not envy situations that require no sense of risk, even if it ends up in sorrow, such as a bird in a cage which might be safe but never experiences freedom, beasts that don't understand the life they take when killing for survival, or those who feel blessed for not going without. The famous two lines that end this canto convey that even though he has tragically lost his closest friend and suffered great mourning because of this, he doesn't regret having loved 
his friend so deeply because the tragedy and deep loss he has felt was worth the great love he experienced through this friendship. Summary and Analysis of Canto 54 this canto reflects the deep sense of mourning Tennyson is feeling and questions the value of life, as well as projects a hope that God created all life for a reason, even if he cannot understand what that reason may be. In the last quatrain of this poem, he admits that his hope that all life was created for a purpose is just a dream, and he, he is but an infant crying in the night, an infant crying for the light and with no language but a cry. Thus, this poem questions the purpose of life and expresses his sense of helplessness as if he were just a baby crying for help with his grief. Summary and Analysis of Canto 56 The sentiments of this canto predicts the sentiment about nature that Charles Darwin's The Origin of Species, especially when he calls nature red in tooth and claw, in that he questions the value of life. He personifies nature and asks if she cares about the extinct species that we know about because of their evidence captured in fossils. And her answer is, a thousand types are gone. I care for nothing. All shall go. She goes on to reveal her lack of concern for life she has created when she says, I bring to life, I bring to death, the spirit does but mean the breath, I know no more. This canto depicts nature as heartless and suggests that humanity may become nothing more than the extinct species which remain only in the fossils of their skeletons that remain sealed within the iron hills. It ends on a hopeless and fearful note in which he calls human life futile and frail, and he calls out for comfort with, O oh, for thy voice to soothe and bless, what hope of answer or redress? His only answer is that perhaps after death, which he describes as behind the veil, he will find an answer to the meaning of life. Clearly, Tennyson describes his feeling as sorrowful and hopeless in this canto.